Welcome back, Northwest Wild Country Sports Radio 950 KJR. This will be this week's installment of our ProCam series, and uh, we're going to talk a little plug fishing. We kind of mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, kind of coincides with the plug rod special that we have going on. I'm trying to entice people who have not taken the opportunity to take the time to learn how to properly run plugs on the river for steelhead. It's time, it's time to do so, and we're going to make it extremely easy. We're going to narrow it down to a rod that's going to perform for you exactly the way you need it to, and we're going to narrow it down on some choices of plugs here if you have to choose one specific brand or type, I'm going to really kind of dial that in for you. So uh, speaking of rods, so we got a uh, Super G Series from Lama Glass. This is an 8 to 20 pound range. It's a 8-foot uh, one-piece rod. Very nice plug rod. You're going to be very happy with this. Oh, look it's, at that wiggle. Yeah, oh. it's, it's pretty Man. sweet. This yeah. is a very nice rod. It's got a graphite handle for durability. Uh, fantastic rod, multiple multiple uses as we talked about before, Keith. For different yes. uh, bottom bouncing, bottom bouncing for yep. walleye, even. Yep. It's going to do everything you want it to do. Uh, it's going to run you a couple hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks for a higher end rod. Don't step on that, guys. Uh, so let's let's bring it down here to something more in the range of a uh, uh, you know a working man that doesn't want to break the bank. Uh, we got the uh, certified pro, this quick series that I mentioned before, on sale at Sportco for what one hundred forty nine bucks. I think what I a said. deal! Yeah, you're saving fifty bucks on this rod. Yeah. It is really. A really nice rod that's going to do everything you want it to do. And uh, uh, for a guy that's been doing some plug fishing for a while and you're looking to upgrade, this is a fantastic stick at a fantastic price. Uh, Sportco and OE for that one. Now, let's get this down here to the to the nuts and bolts. So this classic glass rod, it's, uh, it's an 8-foot 2. It's an 8 to 15. Excuse me, it's an 8 to 20. Uh, and uh, cork handle... Um, this rod will perform very, very well. It has a very soft, sensitive tip. It's going to telegraph, and that's what it comes down to is when you're plug fishing. Those rods, those tips have to be soft enough to telegraph, and you got to have enough backbone to get that fish. A lot of times we're pulling these big fish out of structure. Mm -hmm. So i got to have some backbone on that rod to pull that fish and direct it out of that, out of that wood before it spools me. Um, I like to use reels with line counters. It lets me know exactly how far out we're going. Now, those reels will cost you a little bit more money if you have some like uh, the classic Abu Garcia's 5500 uh, series, 5600 series that oh, yeah. I used to run. Um, you can simply take your braided line, and I do run braided line on my plug rods because I like to get my gear back. Um, I'll run a 45 to 55 pound uh, braided line. You can simply mark that off your spool at 45 feet or 50 feet. If you don't the, have the line if counter. If you don't have the yeah, line right. counter, man, take a, high, take a permanent marker, put about a three inch strip on here of colored line that you know when that is out of the real seat it's exactly how far out you need to be if it's at your rod tip it's 50 feet from mm -hmm. your rod trip if it's uh just out of the reel it's going to be about 45 feet or 40 feet out in front of you so it's a great way to do that if you don't have a line counter but if you can afford line counters man they're so nice you want to run your plugs all at the same uh distance away from the boat and i'm usually 45 to 50 feet out braided line top shot of 20 pound uh monofilament go with some ultra green something really strong 20, 25 pound tests if you're getting out there in the big uh, structure, big fish, and really be able to put some pressure to them. So simplify it down, man. You get this uh, 60, $70 rod, $70 rod. You put a reel on there, you get some braided line. You're really in business for pulling plugs. Now this rod is going to perform very well. It's going to it's gonna telegraph exactly like I mentioned, especially with that braided line on there. There's no bend. There's no, there's no stretch. So what that plug is exactly doing in the water, that rod tip is going to let you know. Um, and set this down. Now, Dwayne, you could also use fluorocarbon on that because, you know, the, the rod's got so much give. Yeah. Um, you're, you're not going to break them off with that stiff line. So summer runs, things like that, you know, that, that same thing would carry over and you can lighten your gear a little bit. You certainly can. Yeah. So there's, there's options in that regard. Uh, the biggest thing when we're learning how to pull plugs, so there's a learning curve here. And uh, there's a number of different plugs to choose from. I'm going to start over here on my far right. We got some hot shots. Been around forever. Great little plug. Thousands of steelhead have died at the hand of this plug. Millions, possibly. <laughs> Hot shot thirty on top. Nice little size plugs for summer run, gin clear water in the in the in a winter fishery. These uh, these uh, Hot shot thirty fives have been very popular for years. Single hook off the tail end of these things. It's an erratic little plug. Some of them rattle, um, but uh, the blue pirate, green green pirate, red bill have just been around for a long time. Uh, again, have caught thousands of fish. It has a, and all these plugs, they have a range. When I'm pulling plugs, they have a range in the types of water they perform well. Some of these you need to tune. Uh, some of them, they'll start running a little, a little off kilter. They'll kind of go off to the side a little bit. You got to, you got to adjust this eye at the top of the plug to get it to run true when you put it to your snap. Um, 
So there's a little bit of effort involved in trying to understand how this plug is supposed to run if you've never run it. Uh, go over here to the next ones in line, the tad polys, if you can find them. Great plugs. They, they perform very well. Some of them rattle, some of them don't. A wide range of colors. Again, it has a okay uh, swath or the, the, the width of types of water it will run correct in, okay? But you got to understand the types of water that it will run effectively. And it's, it's a pretty broad range, but mm-hmm. it can, in some of these plugs, the, the first two I've mentioned here, you get in too fast to water, it's going to kick them to the surface. They're going to flip over. Um, they get running so hard to one side, they dig, dig, dig until they absolutely flip and come to the surface. Mm-hmm. And you're finding it doing that. It's either your tune is not, or your plug is not tuned correctly on the eyelet. You have to bend it some with your pliers or you're running in too fast to water and vice versa. If you're in too slow water, they won't have the erratic action that they need and they won't, they won't actually continue to dive down. They'll just kind of sit. And especially if you get it in some really soft water, they're not going to perform. So again, the range and what these plugs perform in is narrow. Come over here to the uh, the U20 uh, Flatfish, which has worked uh, for years. Uh, it, it, it very much replicates somewhat like a, a quick fish as well. Very much same, similar type of body design. Uh, when it comes to steelhead, these uh, these extremes, the, the, the quick fish, the X9, as I have here, the X11s, they're deep diving uh, little plugs. They're erratic. They work very well for steelhead. So in those extremes, 9s and 11s, there's a great size. The U20 flatfish, uh, YBC, for uh, steelhead is a great size. These plugs also have a range, and they also have an eyelet at the top that you may or may not have to adjust to get it to run correctly. Uh, you're going to find that in, <clears throat> excuse me, too fast to water. They're going to, again, come to the surface. Too slow water, they're not going to perform uh, exceptionally well. Let's move over here to the far left. I have quite a few to look at, different colors and whatnot, and there's a reason for the order in which they're in. We start at the top here. These are more of our fluorescents for dirtier water. And then we kind of move into that, <clears throat> excuse me, that three to six foot of nice green water where we go to our metallics um, with some contrasting colors. And then we get down to that nice gin clear stuff. You run these uh, solid metallic colors, these golds, these greens work really well. Uh, even just chrome in, in gin clear water, believe it or not. And uh, one not to be overlooked, even though it has some fluorescent on the bottom side, this natural looking color combination uh, of a crawfish on this little mm. uh, three, uh, uh, size three. Um, 3.0, that's what I'm 3. trying to 0. say, 3.0. So uh, the YBC, this this uh, particular plug. Now, the reason I favor uh, these over the rest of them, if I'm just starting out to uh, to pull plugs for steelhead, is that the wide range of water that these maglips will run in. Uh, it can be extremely uh, a fast current on the right side of my boat and uh, quite a bit slower on the left. I can put two maglips out, and in differences of water, yeah. you have a couple miles per hour. That plug is going to perform in both uh, atmospheres, so to speak. It's going to run just fine in that faster water. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's also going to run very well in that slow water. So it negates the uh, the ability or my inability to find the right type of water for that plug to perform. These other ones have a narrower range. The, the Maglip has such a, a wide range of all the plugs I have to buy. If I'm going to make the investment and go buy that, that $70 plug rod and get mm-hmm. some reels on there and decide to start pulling plugs, I'm going to get me some Maglips. And again, dirty water, three to six feet of viz, and gin clear in that order with those colors. Uh, this thing is going to perform in that wide range of water. I'm going to have the most success. Now, yeah. if I don't know how to back my boat down or, or back row my boat down river, I'm going to find a stretch of water that's a nice long stretch that looks like a good travel lane for fish. I'm going to drop the anchor. Uh, this is starting out, 101 basics of plug fishing. Drop the anchor. Now, if the boat is moving down river because the anchor won't stick and I got a 30-pound anchor, three guys in the drift boat, uh, just continue to let the boat go down until it stops. Mm-hmm. If your boat's not holding, you don't want to row that type of water to pull plugs. You're going to be working too hard and the yep. fish aren't going to be there anyway. Yeah. So that's my number one rule is if the boat's not sticking, then let it go down until that anchor holds and drop your pick and sit. Put the plug rods out 45 to 50 feet out in front of you. Put the rods in the rod holders. Don't let guys hold on to your rods, okay? Because the first thing they do when that rod doubles over is they set the hook and we're going to lose fish. So put them in the rod holders, set the rods, and watch the action on the tip of your rods. It's going to telegraph exactly what's going on. Both rods should look equal. One may be a little more erratic because it's in faster water. Right, right. The slower one's not going to perform as fast. Don't let that deter you. That is uh, the way it's supposed to be. And what you're doing is you're beginning to get a sense of how those plugs look when they're performing. Mm -hmm. And you sit there on anchor and watch those. Now, 
certain times of year when we have debris, suspended debris floating down the river, and something gets on that plug, a leaf, a small stick, some grass, you're going to watch that rod tip. It's going to change, right, Keith? Just oh, yeah. like when we're trolling. Just, just like trolling for walleye, exactly So we get something on that plug, you're going to notice that the action changes. And if the action changes, you need to reel that in and check because something's going on or something got, maybe the hook got wrapped up on the line. Maybe the hooks got hooked together if you're running double hooks. Anything that changes is going to change the action of that plug. Once you become comfortable in the speed of water you're sitting in and how those plugs are performing, you pull the anchor and you start slowly back rowing to, to let yourself downriver slowly. Okay, You're pushing the plugs in the face of the fish and backing them downriver. The biggest mistake you're going to make when you first start off is you're going to row and you're going to over row because drift boats in soft water, it's really easy to row back up river. So yeah. you pick a landmark on the side or on your, on your river bank, mm-hmm. whether it be a stump, a small tree, a rock or whatever. I'm going to pay attention to that landmark. If I'm back rowing and I'm just constantly sitting there, I might as well be sitting on anchor because I'm not going down river. If I find that that uh, reference point is now quite a ways down below me, it means that I've actually back rowed myself back up river, which is not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Plus your plugs are going to be pulling harder than they're supposed to because it's not natural current speed. So I have to pick that landmark. And as I back row, I'm allowing myself to slowly drift down. So it's not a constant, just keep the oars going. Okay. It is a more so a couple strokes and let it pause, a couple strokes, let it pause. As long as the boat continues to move down river, you're backing those plugs down slowly. Uh, it becomes a technique that you develop over time. And basically, remember your plugs out in front of you 50 feet are an extension of your drift boat. And you learn to ferry angle the back end of your boat over that eventually swings your plugs over into the pocket that you want the plugs to present in. And then you look at structure up ahead of you. And if there's stumps and boulders and things you want to swing those plugs into, if it's river right, you're going to kick the back end of your boat to the left. You're going to swing those plugs back over to the right. So it's kind of a game. Mm-hmm. You uh, you develop the skill set to, to guide those plugs back and forth because you don't just want to go in a straight line. Fish move uh, back and forth in tail outs, and they move over to the side when stuff comes at them. So you need to put pressure on them and swing them plugs back down in front of them. Yep. It's a, it's a, it takes a little time to develop that skill, but once you have mastered that, once you understand the speed of water in which you should run plugs, you start off with some nice classic glass rods, like these classic glass soft tip rods from Lionel Glass. You get some 3.5 or 3.0 meg lips that are going to perform right out of the box in most conditions. You've set yourself up for, you know, 90% of your headaches just go away. Start out on anchor, pick your landmark on your riverbank back your plugs down slow and begin to maneuver them back and forth by moving your boat across the water. That's basically the basics to pulling plugs. And you're going to find success, especially this time of the year when those big fish are in. Mm -hmm. All these plugs that you see here, and especially the 3.5 and 3.0 megalips can be found down there at Sportco and OE. Pro Camp segment brought to you by Sportco and Outdoor Emporium. Sportco and Fife Outdoor Emporium right here in Seattle. Stop by, check it out, talk to the guys at the fish encounter. Pick yourself up some mag lips, get in on those rod specials, and uh, get pulling some plugs for steelhead before the season's over.